Hello, I've enjoyed working on cars since before I've had a driver's license, and I still tinker around every now and then. For example, this is a 1950s era engine from one of my Nash Metropolitans. But I've worked in the transportation BU, where our stated purpose is to accelerate the future of transportation by transforming test into a competitive advantage. So I've been asked when I might work on something a bit more modern. So I decided to build an electric car this weekend with parts I have laying around the house. This is the biggest motor I've got laying around, and I don't know much about it. So let's do a quick experiment with a variable power supply. It doesn't draw a whole lot of current unloaded even at 30 volts, and I can't stop it by hand above 10 volts, so that's promising. Now, let's add an old servo motor controller in current mode, where the output current is proportional to the plus or minus 10 volt control voltage. Some quick math to select a potentiometer and a couple of resistors, and I've got a throttle. I still use the variable power supply, but now at a fixed voltage to emulate a battery. Success! Finally, we need to replace the power supply with some batteries. Here I'm using two 40 volt batteries from my cordless yard equipment connected in series. So here is our final electronics setup. Now we're ready to find a car to put this in. Let's pause for a moment. 80 volts DC is considered a hazardous voltage. It may look like I'm being a bit cavalier in parts of this video, but 80 volts can potentially maim or kill you. Be careful if you want to try this on your own. Fortunately, I have the perfect vehicle for this build, a 60-year-old Nash Metropolitan. It's small, it's light, and all of the unnecessary parts have already been removed. The simplest option is to connect the electric motor directly to the differential, so let's work on that. First, we have to pull the differential and take some measurements. Off come the tires, the shocks, the U-bolts, and finally the relatively heavy differential. It's always great when your dogs decide to help you out. As a quick proof of concept, let's 3D print a coupler to mate the motor shaft to the differential mounting plate. Yeah, that's probably going to shear off, but let's give it a try. I decided to reinforce it with some screws run through the body of the adapter. We also need to mount the motor to the differential housing, which is about as hard as you would think it would be when you mostly have scraps of wood and concrete cardboard forms laying around. It turns out by cutting the end of the tube into strips and forcing it over the snout of the differential, you can reuse three of the differential bolts to hold the tube rigidly in place. Time to connect the electronics and test the complete drivetrain. After a quick test in the garage, the entire assembly was mounted back under the car. When mounted, the motor lays horizontally in front of the differential, where the drive shaft would normally be located. Here I use the VPS for a sanity test before reconnecting the servo amplifier, batteries, and throttle potentiometer. Wheels are spinning. So now that we've moved to the driveway, you can see that there is plenty of room for the motor under the car. I've placed the servo amplifier, batteries, and throttle where the passenger seat would go, and I can simply reach over to control the throttle. Finally, it's important to make sure you have on your safety gear. It's time for the first test drive. Will it move at all? Will it shear off the coupler? Will the battery self-destruct under load? Woohoo! Success! It's creeping, but it is moving under its own power. Perhaps it's not quite ready for the drag strip, but there are plenty of things to improve upon. So maybe I won't be driving to work just yet, but what might it take to do that? Let's ignore the fact that the car doesn't currently have seats, or doors, or brakes, and focus on the powertrain. First, it's obviously got to go faster. I need a much better gear ratio than what I can obtain through just the differential. On most electric vehicle conversions, this is done by connecting the motor to the differential via a manual transmission. This would increase my gear ratio from 4.22 to 1 all the way up to 11.98 to 1. This alone would triple my torque. Speaking of torque, I'm using a very undersized brush DC motor running at 80 volts. I'd upgrade to a larger motor, preferably running over 200 volts. Therefore, I'd also need to upgrade the servo amplifier to a proper high voltage and high current controller. These are available on the market for DIY applications. And while it is amusing to use batteries from my electric chainsaw, and I can easily pull them out to charge, my range right now appears to be a couple hundred yards. I live 18 miles from work, so I would likely construct a battery pack from cells pulled from a Tesla, or Bolt, or similar. So that's what you get when you decide to build an electric vehicle in one weekend. Maybe next year I'll add some autonomous driving features. Thanks for watching.